In philosophy, we use the term metaphysics to describe views about the ultimate nature of reality, of what exists. Think of all the stuff that exists. If I ask, what is the ultimate nature of this stuff? That's a metaphysical question. One way that metaphysical views can differ is on how many different kinds of stuff there is. Is there just one kind of stuff and everything that exists is a manifestation of this one kind of stuff? Or is there more than one kind of stuff at the fundamental level? One of the oldest metaphysical views is dualism, the notion that reality is fundamentally composed of two kinds of stuff, material stuff that we associate with physical matter and physical objects and that obey the laws of nature that physical scientists study, and non-material stuff that we might associate with non-physical entities or powers or substances. Like if you believe in ghosts, then what are ghosts made of? If you believe in gods or spirits or non-physical souls that survive death, What's all this stuff made of? What is its ultimate nature? Well, a widely shared view is that whatever the ultimate nature of this non-material stuff is, it's fundamentally distinct from the ordinary physical matter that we encounter in the world and that physical scientists study when they study physics, chemistry, biology, and so on. That's why it's called dualism, dual for two, two fundamentally different kinds of stuff. One we associate with the world of ordinary experience, the material world, and one we associate with a non-material world that is governed by fundamentally different principles. Now, when it comes to the mind and the brain, or the mind and the body, a dualistic view obviously has its appeal. Thoughts and feelings and beliefs and conscious experiences all seem to be of a fundamentally different order of being than the objects we encounter in the physical world. And you don't need to be religious or spiritual to appreciate the differences. For example, subjective experiences don't seem to be spatially located in the way that physical objects are. If I hit my thumb with a hammer, I feel the pain in my thumb. But if I stick my thumb in my mouth to suck on it to soothe the pain, is the pain now in my mouth? My thumb is in my mouth, and I feel the pain in my thumb, but then is the pain also in my mouth? That doesn't seem quite right. And I can describe the pain as sharp or throbbing, but there's nothing in the physical description of the state of my thumb that I can describe as sharp or throbbing. Or in my brain, if I shift attention to my brain states and my nervous system, there's nothing there in the physical description that I can describe as sharp or throbbing. So it does seem that the properties of our mental states and our conscious mental experiences seem to be of a fundamentally different nature than the properties of ordinary physical objects. Maybe the best explanation for this is that minds and mental states are a fundamentally different kind of thing made of non-physical stuff with non-physical properties. Now, as appealing as this dualist view of the mind and the body is, the fact of the matter is that it's not the working model for the modern scientific view of the mind in psychology and cognitive science. Now, why is this? Religious critics of modern science sometimes claim that science as a worldview is committed to atheism and the denial of the supernatural, and that this atheistic bias needs to be pushed back against. But there are problems with dualism that are quite independent of any religious views one might have. The basic problem is that if your model of a functioning adult human being is a ghost...